gonna you know, change. I felt a bit bad because I wasn't watching the time on these videos and I really wanted to just I mean this is optional you don't have to know this but I just think it's interesting and it links to what you've just done with uh, marginal cost and supply so elasticity particularly for supply and, and to an extent demand as well is determined by time periods um, so in terms of supply it's what you already know about how how you are able to respond to changes in the price right and, and change your production so that relates to your resources and then whether they're fixed or variable so we know that um you know and i think i'll just use this example imagine like a sheep farmer I come from southland so you know i know sheep sort of um when when you when you sell when you have sheep you raise them right and then you take them to like an auction okay where they get um sold and taken to the networks generally sorry for those who are vegetarians um but when you turn up to the auction if the price is higher than what you expected so you, it's like it could be considerably higher that you can't just go oh i'll go grab you know another truckload of sheep you can't because you've only bought what you bought with you to the auction all right the market in this case which is why it's called the market time period so for a sheep farmer they have perfectly an elastic supply in the momentary period and that's because they have um only like usually you know they bring a truckload of sheep you know they might have bought two you know one of those double truck things but usually you know they just got what they bought to the to the auction um in the long term though they can um you know oh yeah so i we went to the auction last week and the price was quite a bit higher than what i thought you know and it's staying high so um what i might do is i might um breed some more sheep this season um i'm not going to go into that but basically they could um put more um sheep out in pasture um they can get more um you know feed to feed up the the lady sheep and so forth so that they can make more sheep all right um but in in the short term they are fixed by how many sheep that i guess they can have on their property at any one time so you know they've got a certain amount of land and acres that kind of thing um they've you know got so much fencing and stuff to keep them all in um i don't know they only have a certain number of rams male sheep to uh, impregnate the lady sheep so in the short term they can increase the amount of like lambs for example that they're going to bring to the sheep auction but um they, they can only bring so much and the other thing of course that's probably more obvious and practical is that if say they went to the sheep auction this week and the price was rising but they couldn't respond to that they know that they I don't know, are coming back in a couple of months to another sheep auction they could send another truck okay so maybe the first time they only bought one truck but this time they might bring two or three like trailer of truck of sheep so basically they're bringing more sheep to the market right and that's what we know as a short term they they can't like just bring a whole mass of sheep they can't infinitely bring as much sheep as they want um but they certainly could bring more um to the sheep market in the short term and in, in a slightly more time they could try and breed more sheep in the long term if the price of say sheep lambs for example stays really high then they could be like you know what we need to expand our operations let's talk with the person next to us about buying their land and we'll take that over and we'll put more sheep on it we'll breed more sheep and we can you know keep on increasing the size of our farm to accommodate this increase in the price and take advantage of it and that's the idea of the long term and that's when you can and the idea of inputs or variables that you can infinitely change and get what you need to respond to changes in price and increase your quantity supply all right and of course this does relate to mc and supply and the idea of diminishing returns um you don't have diminishing returns in the long run because you can theoretically infinitely change your production to in this case changes in price and i'm just going to flip back here um if i can to the graphs yeah so this is what's called marshall's time periods and the idea of perfectly elastic is the market or momentary time period when you can't supply anymore like you've only got what you bought to the market and in the short term it becomes more elastic so unitary is here so you're somewhere between here you know maybe next market day you're here you bring another trailer of sheep and then you know, like getting further you breed more sheep over the season but then in the long run you buy the people's farms around you to expand your operations okay so that's not what we know as time periods now at this point i think it's a good idea to maybe if you if you're up to it and if you want to like this point you're like oh yeah that was interesting i've had enough but if you are interested in pushing yourself a little more i think this was an nca question 
back in the day, um, where I, I think so, I think when they were assessing marginal uh, sorry, elasticity in an exam, they might have asked this, and I may have changed the person who it relates to um, to make it kind of relate to you a bit. Um, but this is kind of thinking about what that means in practice. Okay, the housing market in New Zealand is a really, really good one, and there is a little activity there for you on Moodle if you wanted to have a go. Uh, you might need to wait until you've looked at market equilibrium, supply and demand shifts, and stuff like that before you get to it. But you know, you could have a go now if you want. So um, here we go. This is the question. Sometimes late at night, Stanley's a track cab driver. He's lots of U13s. You want to get home. Blah blah blah. It's really late, um, and he can charge whatever he likes but he can't take advantage of this, um, and this is due to Marshall's time period. So have a think, all right, and then pause the video, why Stanley cannot always increase his quantity supply when the price increases using an appropriate diagram. And you're thinking, what's an appropriate diagram? Literally, rewind, you know, the graph one, this one. Okay, this is what you would use. Okay, so we'd want you to use this. All right, again, you don't have to do this, but it's just, you know, kind of like thought-provoking, You've got nothing better to do at home, maybe. I don't know. Before you go to Netflix, have a go at this. All right, so pause, have a go, and then when you've had a go, unpause, and you can see the answer, which is this. All right, so law of supply says that the price went up, he should increase his quantity supply. All right, in the momentary period, all right, he can't increase his quantity supply that much. He's only got one cab, and sure, he could like come back, but you know, he, it, how long is it going to take for him to drop someone off and then come back? So he is fixed in terms of what he can offer immediately and, and how many jobs he can take, okay? If it does stay high, then he could work longer shifts, you know, like maybe he only had an hour left on a shift initially, but like if, you know, he's on noticing like every, say Friday or Saturday night, there's a long queue of year 13s ready to be taken home, then maybe he could expand his shift um, and work longer. So then his quantity supply could increase because he could work more hours and supply more taxi runs home. In the long run, you know, I'm just, this is really like just theoretical. He could maybe, um, yeah, work more hours, but he could maybe like get another cab, start his own company, contract out, subcontract it'll work. Like if he's working for a cab company already, he could like get another cab and like hire someone else to do part of his work, say giving them like a commission or something like that. Um, and he could like work in different locations as well. And that's like the idea in the long run. He could be like, whoa, this is a really lucrative business to get into right now. I could totally make a fortune. I'm going to expand my operations. And I would think that probably like supermarkets in New Zealand online delivery is a really good example of, wow, if they wanted to be price gouging and really taking advantage of the situation, which they're not, they could really take advantage of this by, you know, like massive supermarkets everywhere. Um, well, toilet paper production might be a really good example of this right now. Let's just totally go nuts and supplying toilet paper to New Zealand because, yeah, apparently it's a much needed thing. Also, like soap and flour, apparently, is another product that's really high in demand now and is commanding. Well, it's not, not working out the price, but to be honest, they could do. So... I hope you found that kind of interesting. You don't need to know that we're not going to be assessing um, price elasticity of supply in terms of an internal. Could come up in maybe the externals and market equilibrium. It hasn't really ever, but sometimes there might be something about an elastic supply curve. Maybe, probably not. Um, but scholarship, if you're listening um, and you're thinking about that, this possibly could be something that comes up. Um, which just could be for interest and, you know, like I said, you can't find anything on Netflix to watch or a book to read, so there you go. All right, so ka kite, hope you enjoyed that. Stay well.